Hey guys, it's Will from Tested. It's Friday, which means it's time for another edition of Print the Mystery Object with the Mist Maker Bot. Uh, we're doing something a little bit different this week. If you recall, last week I printed this guy. It's the tiny, cute octopus designed by MakerBot, uploaded to Thingiverse. You remember the deal. Now I have to admit, I had an ulterior motive for printing this cute little guy. I'd been looking for something with some nice, smooth surfaces for quite a while, so I could test a new process developed by a couple of guys from a makerspace down south. Neil Underwood and Austin Wilson. Uh, now the way this works is really straightforward. You put a model into a jar, you suspend the model a couple of millimeters off the bottom of the jar, and then you put a couple of drops of acetone in that jar and heat it up to about 90 degrees Celsius. What happens is the acetone vaporizes, becomes a gas, and then it ensconces itself around the model, and that's just enough to soften the surface enough that it kind of flows a little bit and becomes soft and very shiny. Okay, so I bought a 600 milliliter flask from Amazon. It was about 20 bucks. And uh, I figured I'd do some quarters to keep my stuff off the bottom and just put a couple of drops of acetone at a time until I had a good cloud of it in there. And then I'd heat it up on the build platform of the MakerBot. Now I miscalculated slightly because my octopus doesn't really fit in there very well. He's not flat, which means it won't work. The good news is we have a 3D printer, so I just printed another octopus. It's a little bit smaller. Uh, and I'm gonna set him in here. We're gonna put it on the platform. We're gonna heat it up to 90 degrees and we're gonna see how this works and how long it takes. I have no idea. I haven't done this before. We're doing it for the first time live. Uh, you can use a normal hot plate. I'm using our MakerBot because we can control the temperature on that pretty well. And uh, let's, let's see how this works. I'm interested to see. One last thing. I'm using a disposable eyedropper to apply the acetone because I don't want to hit the model with the acetone. It'll cause the surface to run. Uh, and I didn't want to waste something that's actually good uh, with the acetone. So here we go. Let's keep our fingers crossed that I don't burn down the tested offices. Drop, 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 drop. It's probably enough to start. Put it in here. Okay, this has been an interesting experiment. This is the first guy I tried. You didn't actually see the time lapse of him, uh, but I left him in too long. And as you can see on the top, the, the plastic sagged. Enough acetone got all the way through the plastic that it sagged down into the holes in the support material underneath. And uh, while he is very shiny and smooth, he has a lumpy head and that is not particularly cool. He was in for about 45 minutes, which is way, way, way too long. I also realized he was much too close to the acetone. I couldn't get enough in to keep a consistent cloud because some escaped and blew away and, and whatever. Uh, I, I didn't put a cover on either, which also made the acetone much like, less likely to stay in the beaker. So for the second pass, I made this. It's a little bit of a lift. It sits in the jar and it holds the model about an inch up off the bottom of the jar. So you can put more acetone in and keep a consistent uh, cloud of gas coming into the beaker to replace whatever's blown out by convection. I also covered the beaker, which gave much more uh, consistent results. And this is the result for that one. Uh, so this guy is super smooth. I maybe left him in a little tiny bit too long. There's some slight lumps on the top where the support structure sagged just a bit. But I think the result's really good and is quite good for a second pass. This one was in for about 25 minutes. Uh, I think I'm gonna try it again and do about 15 minutes and then maybe a five minute cleanup pass later. I think two passes is probably better than just one. So for the third try, I took that initial model that was too big and I just suspended him in the top of the, of the beaker and he hung there while he got smooth. I think he's the best of all. It seems like he was in for about 20 minutes, maybe 18, somewhere in there and the results are really good. He's super smooth, he's got a nice finish. There's a couple of little rough spots that could be sanded easily. Uh, if you wanted to put a coat of paint on him, he would look really sweet. 
So this works because acetone gas is heavier than air. What that means is that the acetone that's in the bottom evaporates, fills the beaker and pushes the air out of the top. So after the, the, the liquid's been boiling for a couple of minutes, then the whole beaker will be filled with acetone vapor. You don't want to breathe that, it's really bad for you, it'll make you feel bad and cause memory loss and maybe blurred vision and all sorts of other stuff. Uh, but what it, what it does do is smooth the surface of the plastic. So uh, that is the acetone smoothing process. I think it's really cool. Now there's some stuff to warn you about because it's a little bit dangerous. Acetone is incredibly flammable. Acetone vapor, the stuff that fills the beaker as it boils and rests at the bottom of the beaker is also incredibly flammable and flames on that are basically invisible. So if you have a bunch of acetone vapor spills out, it reaches someplace that there's a spark, you'll have an invisible flame moving from there to the place where the acetone is and you'll probably burn your house down. So maybe do this outside away from flammable stuff. Make sure there's no sparks around uh, and cover the beaker but don't seal it. If you seal it, then pressure will build up and it'll blow out and it'll be bad things. You also don't want to breathe acetone vapor. It's not terribly bad for you, but it can cause memory loss and, and blurred vision and do all sorts of bad things and not in a fun way. So uh, be careful if you're using acetone, uh, make sure you don't expose it to open flame or sparks. Uh, 90 degrees Celsius is the temperature you want to boil the acetone at. And, uh, and if you're going to try this at home, let us know how it goes in the comments below. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.